I'm Joe Biden's husband and Lady Gaga's friend. We go back a while. One thing I wasn't going to say, but I'll say it now. She spent a lot of time helping me with the Violence Against Women Act and helping so many women who needed help. God love you. You're wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Folks, John, thanks, old buddy, for sharing your story. And thanks to Mr. Mayor. I don't know where you are. I can't see out here. But I tell you what, thanks for the passport into town. And thanks for all the speakers we heard tonight, as well as the incredible, as I said, Lady Gaga. I don't know whether you couldn't see, but all my grandkids were over there, Lady Gaga. And when you were singing, they knew every word of every song. They were jumping and moving. I got to get a picture with them. Anyway, my buddy, Congressman Mike Doyle, Governor Tom Wolf, thank you for standing with me and fighting for the dignity of working people. Everyone you've heard from across the state, as well as in Philadelphia, we hear you loud. We hear you clearly. Congressman Boyle has been with me a while. Remarkable, great friend, a friend of his family. We grew up, his dad and I grew up five blocks away from, other, from one another in Scranton. Bobby Casey, Patty LaBelle, and John Legend. My Lord, John, I'm voting for you after I heard that speech you made. Look. And the second future gentleman, Doug. Doug, God love you. You are a good man. And I want to thank the next Vice President of the United States, woman I am so proud to run alongside him, Kamala Harris. months ago, we kicked off the campaign at Teamsters Local 249 right here in Pittsburgh. I chose Western Pennsylvania for my first stop as a candidate, and now for my last stop before Election Day, because you represent the backbone of this country. Hard-working families. We're asking nothing but a fair shot, an even chance. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. The qualities that built this country, that created and sustained the middle class. And by the way, as I said twice other today, unions built the middle class. Look, we've been through a lot in this country since we announced America's facing the confluence of crises unlike anything in living memory. We're still in the battle for the soul of America. Decency, honor, respect. Where has it gone with this president? Well, let me tell you something, folks. Tomorrow's the beginning of a new day. Tomorrow, we can put an end to a presidency that has left hard-working Americans out in the cold. Tomorrow, we can put an end to a presidency that has divided this nation. Ban the flames of hate. Tomorrow, we can put an end to a presidency that has failed to protect this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, millions of Americans have already voted, close to 100 million, and millions more will vote tomorrow. And my message to you is simple the power to change this country is in your hands. In your hands. I don't care how hard Donald Trump tries. There's nothing, nothing that's going to stop the people of this nation from voting. Period. And when America votes, America will be heard. And America's heard. I believe the message will be loud and clear. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. Responsibility, the indifference to American lives, the indifference to America's dignity. We've got a lot of work to do. 
provision and distraction, but real, real, real healing of this country. If you elect me your president, I'm going to heal this country, and we're going to act. We're going to act to get COVID under control, beginning on day one. I'll put an action, a plan I've been talking about for months, asking social distancing, testing, tracing, plan for full and fair redistribution of therapeutics and a vaccine when it comes. Imagine, imagine where we could be if a president only wore a mask from the beginning instead of mocked it. I can tell you this, as every expert will tell you, we wouldn't have 9 million COVID cases in this nation wouldn't have over 230,000 deaths, nearly 100,000 cases nationwide just two days ago. Wouldn't be facing another 200,000 predicted deaths in the next few months. That's what the experts are telling us. We don't change. 200,000 more people will die by the end of the year. The president knew in January, as Kamala said, that this virus was deadly. But he hid it from the American people. He knew it was worse than the flu, but he lied to us. He knew it wasn't going to disappear. He kept telling us a miracle was coming. Be over by Easter. Last Friday, he had the gall to suggest that America's doctors, who've been in the front lines of this crisis for nine months, along with the nurses and so many other first responders, he suggested those doctors were falsely inflating the deaths due to COVID because they wanted more money, for God's sake. No, I really mean it. Think about it. Our frontline healthcare workers, they've suffered and sacrificed for nine months. And this president's questioning their character, their integrity, their commitment to their fellow Americans. It's a disgrace. And last night, Trump went on to say he was going to fire Dr. Fauci. Well, I've got a better idea. Let's fire Trump and I'll hire Fauci. Think about it. Look, Donald Trump has waved the white flag of surrender. Remember he said, I'm the commander in chief and I'm going to fight this fight. Give me a break. Wave the white flag of surrender. I'll never surrender. We're going to beat this virus. We're going to get it under control. And the first step, the first step to beating this virus is beating Donald Trump. truth. Donald Trump is going to be the first president in 90 years. That's a lot of presidents. The first president in 90 years to finish his term in office with fewer jobs than when he started. It's an independent analysis. Not from some liberal think tank, but by Moody's at Wall Street firm. Projects that my plan will create 7 million more jobs a trillion dollars more economic growth than anything the president has proposed. Folks, we can do this. I'm going to end Trump's tax loopholes and incentivize companies to shift jobs overseas. That's why there's not as many jobs here. I'm going to add a 10% surtax on any company that shifts jobs overseas. But companies who invest American manufacturers bring jobs back. We'll give them a 10% tax credit. And by the way, the President of the United States awards about over $600 billion of contracts a year because of everything from building aircraft carriers to all that we do, all the government spends. I promise you this, this violates no trade agreement. There will be no government contracts given out on my watch that don't make all of the products here in America. The 
He said, Joe, the only way you can deal with the abuse of power is with power. But the only outfit that can deal with the abuse of power in corporate America is union power. That's the only way it can be dealt with. And I warn you all, if I'm elected, you're going to see the most pro-union president in American history sitting in the White House. Look. about rewarding work, not wealth. Under my plan, Kamala said, you make less than 400,000 bucks, you're not going to pay a penny more in taxes. But finally, finally, the wealthiest among us, the biggest corporations, 91 of which of the Fortune 500 paid zero in income tax, you're going to start paying your fair share. Why? Why should an iron worker, a firefighter, an educator, a nurse pay a higher tax rate than the super wealthy? Yeah, yeah. Folks, and here's the good one. Why should you be paying more than Donald Trump pays in taxes? The New York Times said he paid $750 in taxes one year. Guess what? When they asked him about it a little before that, he said the reason he only paid that is because he was smart. He knew how to game the system. Well, I'm sick of the wealthy guys gaming the system. Most are willing to pay their fair share. But let me tell you, by the way, I love to talk about corruption. We love to talk about corruption. We found out last week that the only president I've ever heard of has a secret bank account in China where he paid, according to the Times, 50 times more taxes in Beijing than he did in the United States. Folks, as my mother would have said, enough is enough is enough. Look. We're going to have to protect health care as well. Trump and Republicans in the last 10 years have been trying like the devil to eliminate the health care plan. By the way, because of economic policies, so many companies going out of business, we've already, 10 million Americans have already lost their health care. And now Trump and the Republicans, they jam to a Supreme Court nominee for one overwhelming reason. They want to destroy the Affordable Care Act. If they get their way, by the way, if this is not hyperbole, by the way, guess what's going to happen? Seven days after tomorrow, they're going to be in the Supreme Court arguing to wipe out, through that brand, all the Affordable Care Act. Well, you can say that again because a lot of people are hurt. I can remember as a kid growing up in Claymont and Wilmington. In a three-bedroom house, nice house, three-bedroom, foot-level home with four kids and a grandpa. The walls were thin. I can remember one night, my dad, I could hear him rest in the room next to us. Walking to my mom and asking the next morning, what's the matter? He said, your dad, they just lost, it. They just lost our health insurance. How many people you know staring at the ceiling, wondering what in God's name are they going to do without health insurance? How many of them, how many of them are worried like we were when our son came home from Iraq and was lying dying? I wonder what would have I would have, would have done had they been able to come in but for Obamacare and say, sorry, sorry, 
suffered the last months in the hospital with your niece without your insurance. You're about to run your insurance. How many people do you know, and many of you, worry about it? Worry about your kids? Worry about what's happening? Well, if they get their way, 100 million Americans will lose protections for pre existing conditions, including 5 million Pennsylvanians. It's wrong. It's wrong. Donald Trump, look, folks, being a great consumer of health care, I feel very strongly about this. Donald Trump thinks health care is a privilege. I think it's a right. I'm not only restore health care, I'll build on it. You can keep your private insurance if you have it, or you can choose a Medicare-like option. We're going to increase subsidies to lower your premiums and deductibles, out-of-pocket spending, surprise billings. How are you going to do that? Because Trump and his buddies are going to pay more taxes so you don't have to do more. And we're going to reduce if, I, if it didn't sound so strange, I wouldn't even explain. We're going to reduce prescription drug costs by 60 percent. You know how? By making sure Medicare can negotiate with the insurance companies for the cost of drugs. We're going to make sure you keep the protection for pre-existing conditions. Meanwhile, you know, these guys are for real, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Trump's announced what he'll do if he gets reelected with regard to Social Security. The actuary at Social Security has said if Trump were elected and gets past what he wants, it will bankrupt Social Security by 2023. Now, y'all may think I'm making it up, but just like I said, when Paul Ryan was head of, was the Speaker of the House, I said they're going to cut Medicaid. Medicare, I should say. Everybody looked, no, no. They tried to cut it by $5 billion right off the bat. Folks, these guys are serious. They don't ever, they've never fully supported these programs. I'll protect Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. You have my word on it. But folks, as we used to say in the Senate, the experience the point of personal privilege. There's nothing that has made me more angry about this president than the way he's spoken about those of you who have served in uniform. Losers and suckers referred you. Our son, Bo, his two children are with me tonight. He gave up his job as Attorney General to volunteer to go to Iraq for a year. He won the Bronze Star. Distinguished Service Medal, came home with brain cancer. And guess what? He wasn't a sucker, he was a patriot. Like all of your sons and daughters. It angers the hell out of me the way he talks about our veterans. Your parents, your grandparents, all have served. To the best of my knowledge, He's the first president of the United States who had six generals and admirals who worked in his administration, who left, who since left, and said he was unfit to be commander-in-chief. Folks, that's why General Stanley McChrystal, the former commander of special operations, oversaw the bin Laden raid. Admiral Bill McCraven and 22 other four-stars endorsed me because they know I'll have their back. It's not happened before. Trump likes to portray himself as a tough guy, the macho man. Wouldn't you like to have a shot? Anyway, the macho man. When's the last time that he says people listen to him because he's tough around the world? When's the last time you ever heard of a president of the United States literally being laughed at out loud by world leaders when he spoke of the United Nations? So much for listening to him.
was the last time a president of the United States met with the NATO leaders at the NATO summit. Other world leaders, chancellors, presidents, prime ministers. And before he didn't re before they realized it, they were all making fun of him as he left the room. Folks, can you believe we're a president who acts like Vladimir Putin's puppy? Putin has put bounties on the heads of American soldiers in Afghanistan, where I've been to many times. It's a rough area, man. But Trump has talked to him six times since then, and he's been afraid to say or challenge him at all. Donald Trump isn't strong, he's weak. This is the president who not only doesn't understand sacrifice, doesn't understand courage, physical courage it takes to be in uniform. Folks, we're going to support our military. They're the backbone and spine of this country. Folks, we have to vote to meet the challenge of the climate crisis. Donald Trump calls it a hoax. I call it about our health and the ability to create millions of good-paying jobs right here in Western Pennsylvania. We can combat climate change with American ingenuity and manufacturing, creating millions of new high-paying union jobs. Let me be clear. I will not ban fracking in Pennsylvania. I'll protect those jobs, period, no matter what Donald Trump says. But I tell you what. I will, I will no longer fund oil companies with subsidies, period. Folks, folks, we have to restore the backbone of this country. But we also have to unify it. Look, we're going to act to deliver racial justice in America. The protesting is not burning and looting. The violence will not be tolerated. But protesters, a cry for justice. The names of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Jacob Blake, yeah. Walter Wallace, they're not going to be soon, be soon forgotten by me, not by anyone in this country. And they're going to inspire a new wave of justice in America. When I met, when I met with Floyd's family, when I went down to Texas, he has a little daughter, six years old, when I knelt down to talk to her, and she looked at me and said, Mr. Vice President, she said, my daddy is going to change America. My daddy is going to change America. And guess what? We also know, we also know, the American people realize we got to change. We also know that justice isn't just about, it's just about criminal justice. It's about knowing the true justice about jobs and building wealth for your family. No one should be working two jobs to stay in poverty. We need a minimum of $15 an hour minimum wage. And for people struggling, first-term home buyers, they're going to get a $15,000 tax credit from me. We're going to provide capital for young entrepreneurs to start small businesses, provide free community college, which, by the way, costs a lot of money, $6 billion a year. We spend about that much money to give them breaks out for racehorses. Yeah. Folks, folks, as well as free tuition for students attending state universities if they come from families making less than 125 grand. Yeah. Folks. We can do this, Pennsylvania. In 2008 and 2012, you placed your trust in me and Barack. In 2020, I'm asking and seeking your trust again. I take nothing for granted. This is a battle for the soul of America. We have to win this. We have to win this together. Bring the country together. I'm proud of the coalition this campaign has built welcoming Democrats and Republicans and independents. I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I will govern as an American president.
There will be no red states and blue states. There will be the United States of America. <laughs> I promise you, I'll work as hard for those who don't support me as those who do. That's the job of a president, the duty to care for everyone, the duty to heal. That's the president's job. So please vote. If you still have your absentee ballot, get it to a drop box as soon as you can, or vote tomorrow in person. Just make a plan and help get out the vote. The power is in your hands, Pennsylvania. And here's the amazing thing. Here's the amazing thing about this moment in our history. The character of the country is on the ballot. On the one hand, we're facing the biggest threats to who we are and what we believe that we've seen in our lifetime. But on the other hand, our future has never been more promising. I've said it many times. I'm more optimistic about America's future today than I was when I got invited as a, and got elected as a 29-year-old kid. And here's why. We're a better position than any nation in the world to lead the 21st century. In fact, our workers are three times as productive. We have the biggest economy in the world, the strongest military in the history of the world, the most innovative entrepreneurs. We're virtually energy independent. We have more great research universities out of which every major new change has come than all the rest of the world combined, literally. No nation in the world can match us. We lead by the power of our example, not just the example of our power. The only thing that can tear America apart is America itself. No one else can challenge us. That's exactly what Donald Trump has been doing from the beginning of this campaign, dividing America, tearing us apart, pitting Americans against one another based on our race, our gender, our ethnicity, our religion. It's wrong. That's not who we are. Folks, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Let's keep showing them who we are. We choose. We choose hope over fear. We choose unity over division. We choose science over fiction. And yes, we choose truth over lie after lie after lie. Folks, it's time to stand up and take back our democracy. We can do this. We can be better than what we've been. We can be who we are at our best. The United States of America. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you.